All right then, so there's just one more thing I'd like to show you in this chapter before we go right ahead and make our first mini project in the next chapter, and that is how to read and write JSON files. So then, I've already created a new path object right here, which points to the current directory of this file, and then to a characters.json file. Now then, this doesn't exist yet. But like we've seen before, when we come to open this file in write mode, then Python creates it for us if it doesn't already exist. We've also got this characters variable, which is a dictionary containing a characters key. And the value of that key is a list of characters with multiple different properties. So this characters data is the data we ultimately want to write to the JSON file. So in our Python code, this is a dictionary, right? Containing a list of other dictionaries. But when we write this to a JSON file, it needs to be passed into a JSON string. Now, we'll see how to do that later, but for now, let me move on to these two functions I've already prepped. One called writeJSON and one called readJSON, both of which we invoke from the main function, which runs when we run the file. So we'll be fleshing out both of those functions in this lesson to write to the JSON file, as well as read the JSON file once it's created. So let's start with the writeJSON function. Now the first thing we need to do, like always, is open the file. And we've seen now we can use three different approaches to doing that. In this lesson, we'll be using a context manager for each function. So I'll say here with path, which is the path we already have, dot open and invoke that and pass in a W to open this in write mode. Then we'll say as file, so that we can use that file within the context manager. Now, previously, when we wrote to a file, we would just use the write method on the file itself, but that was to write simple strings. And this time we want to write this character's data as a JSON string to a file. So first we would need to pass this into a JSON string and then write it to the file. Now, fortunately, there is a very easy way to do this using the JSON module from the Python standard library. So let's import that first of all at the top of the file by just saying import JSON. So we're importing this whole JSON module, whereas with the pathlib module, we just imported a single thing from it. Now then we can come down here to the open file and we can say JSON, which is what we just imported and use a method on that called dump. Now this dump method will take in a few arguments. The first one is the data that we want to write as a JSON string to a file. In our case, that's the characters variable, which is remember a dictionary. The second one is the file to which we want to write to, which is just this file that we've got open. So we can add that in as well. And the third one that we're going to add will be a named argument because it's not third positionally, so we need to give it a name, and this is called indent. So we want to specify how many spaces the indents should have, should be rather, when this file gets written, and we're just going to say two. So then the dump method would do a couple of things for us. First, it's going to serialize our dictionary into a JSON string. Then it's going to write that JSON string to the file that we specify right here. And that's all there is to it. So now hopefully if we run this, then we should see the characters.json file created and the JSON string written to that file. So let's have a quick look and see if this works by running the file. And yep, yeah, we can see now that our new JSON file is over here and inside that we can see the JSON. Awesome. All right. So next up, let's try reading this JSON file from the program. Okay, so we'll do this inside the read JSON function right here, and we'll do this using a context manager again. So let's actually just copy that line of code from up here because I'm super lazy and we're going to paste it into this function down here. But we need to change the open mode to R this time, meaning we just want to read from this file now. Okay, so next we need to do two things. We need to read the content within the file, which is currently a JSON string. Then we need to take that JSON string and pass it into a data structure that we could possibly work with inside this Python application, like a dictionary. And again, this is really easy to do using the JSON module. And this time we can just say data is equal to json.load and then invoke that. And then we're going to pass in the file we want to load 
and read from, which is just the file variable that we have. So what this load method does is load or read the contents of the file. And then it automatically passes that into a dictionary for us to use within this Python program. And that's awesome because that was so easy to do. Okay, so now we need to return that data from this function because down in the main function where we invoke this, we say data is equal to whatever this function returns. So now in the main function, this data variable will be the dictionary of data. So we could print that to the terminal to see what it looks like. And it should look like the dictionary we created at the top of this file. But let's just run the file to make sure. And yep, we can see that it's a dictionary with the characters key right here in the terminal. And yeah, everything looks correct. So then my friends, that is how we can very easily write and read JSON data to and from files. And that is the end of this chapter as well. Okay then gang, so that's the end of this mini course. I really hope you enjoyed it. And remember, this was just a single free chapter from my Python masterclass course, which includes loads more Python content and subjects like fetching data, uh, making a web API, working with CSV files, third party packages, and much more as well. So if you enjoyed this little course, then I reckon you're gonna love the masterclass course, which you can get right here for just $10. So I'll leave the link to this page down below the video. Also, if you want instant access to all of the masterclass courses on the website and all of my other shorter premium courses as well, you can sign up for a NetNinja Pro subscription for just $9 a month. And you can get your first month half price when you use this promo code right here. So I will leave the link to this page down below the video as well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'm going to see you all in the next one.